Hello artists. For this week's art lesson, we're going to be making some winter llamas. I'm going to show you how you can draw a llama step by step using some simple lines and shapes that we already know. And then I'll give you some suggestions of all different types of accessories and details that you can add to your llama, like a scarf or a hat or um, lights in a saddle and how you could add different things for the llama to carry on its back. We'll also go over suggestions of how you can make a desert landscape to go with your llama in the background. For this lesson, you need a piece of paper, a pencil to draw, an eraser in case you make a mistake. If you want to outline your llama or your entire picture, you'll need a black marker. And remember, it does not have to be a permanent marker. Any black marker will do. And for coloring, you can use whatever materials you have. Crayons and markers are perfectly fine. If you want to use some colored pencils or paint or pastels, of course you can. So let's grab all our materials and get ready to create our winter llamas. Before you begin to draw your llama, you should take your paper in front of you and turn it horizontal across. That way you have enough room for not only your llama, but for the desert scene behind it. So I'm going to draw with a black marker so everyone can see. You should be drawing with a pencil in case you make a mistake. The first thing we need to do is we need to find our starting point for our llama. Now our llama is gonna be facing sideways, so it's gonna take up most of the center of our paper. Llamas have long necks, so we're gonna actually start with the face of our llama first. So if the body is down here, the face would be more to the side and up top a little bit. So once you have your dot, you can make a little mark on the spot where you want to begin. And from that dot, I'm gonna start with the llama's nose. So I'm gonna make a little curved line to start with. Under that curved line, we're gonna make the llama's mouth. So I'm gonna come straight down a little line, and then I'm gonna curve out on both sides. One and two. Remember, you still have to fit the rest of your llama's body, so this shouldn't be too big. So if it looks a little too big, you could always erase it and fix it before you move on. Around my nose and mouth, I'm gonna make an oval shape for the nose and center of my llama's face. Above the nose is the eyes of my llama. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna make two little circles. If you wanna make your eyes different, of course you can, but I'm gonna make them real easy. Two little circles, once and twice. And llamas are actually known for having very long eyelashes. So I'm gonna make some long eyelashes on the side of my llama's eyes. Now that we have the face done for our llama, we're gonna start the shape of the neck and the body. And we're gonna use a bumpy line, almost like a wavy line to make the llama's body and neck. That way it looks like it's fluffy, like the furry fluffy llama would look in real life. So I'm gonna go above the eyes and put my pencil down for a place to start. And I'm gonna start making a bumpy line, these little curves. And I'm gonna keep going. Llamas have a long neck, so I gotta come down a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my line and I'm gonna turn it because now I'm gonna start making the body. So I have to come out to the side a little bit so I should come down with my bumpy line and over to the other side. And then I'm gonna go back to that starting point and I'm gonna come around the other way. And I'm gonna come down for the neck and stop because I still have the rest of the body to do, but I'm gonna change the line from bumpy to a curve. So you should have it come down and across and then down the other side. And I'm gonna take this line right here, I'm gonna curve it up just a little bit more because it looked a little bit too straight. And now I'm gonna connect the two with a curve, like an arch, very simple. 
If there's something about your llama's body that looks a little bit off or a little bit too short or a little bit too big, you can always fix it before we move on. But you just have the bumpy line for the fluffy fur of your llama that comes down and around and then one big curve to connect the two. Up top of my llama's head, we're gonna put the ears. So I'm gonna make two more curves, once and twice, and they should be over to the side a little bit. And another smaller curve on the inside. If you noticed, our llama is full of curved lines, whether it's a bigger curve or the smaller curves for the bumpy furry line, there are curves all over in our drawing, not too many straight ones. I'm gonna go below my llama and I'm gonna add the four legs. So let's start with half circles or curved shapes. One, two, three, and four. Remember to spread them out so that the legs go across the body. They shouldn't all be bunched together in the front. You gotta spread them out a little bit. Below, we'll finish the legs by making a straight line down and then a little circle at the end. And we'll do that for all four of our llama's legs. There you go. The only thing missing is the little tail. So we'll come to the end of our llama's body and almost like a triangle, just give him or her a little tail. And there's the basic shape of your llama. Now llamas, when they are used to carry different things or somebody rides a llama, you have to put a blanket or a saddle on its back. So we're gonna design a little saddle shape or blanket shape for our llama. So in this empty space where our llama's back would be, we're gonna make a nice size curve. It'll look like a half a circle when we are done. That gives us the shape of our blanket or saddle, and now we can design it and decorate it. So I'm gonna make another curve and maybe one more. Now inside these spaces, I could put different designs and patterns. So maybe this one I make little circles. Maybe this one I make almost like a star or a snowflake. Maybe I make a zigzag on the bottom. And you could use simple lines and shapes that you already know to add some fun designs to your llama's blanket or saddle. And I'll make it look like there's some fringe or pom-poms hanging off. So I'll add a little extra details around the edge. And there you go. Remember, you could always pause the video so that it gives you some time to stop and design your blanket or saddle before you move on. Now that you've got the basic shape of your llama drawn and your saddle or blanket all designed, you get to add some extra winter details to your llama. Now in the PowerPoint that's attached to our lesson, I put multiple examples of different winter llama pictures, some that have hats and earmuffs and scarves and lights and sweaters and all different things that you can add. There's also ideas for what you can have carrying on your llama's back. Maybe there's boxes or suitcases or presents or trees, or maybe you wanna make another little llama on top of the llama. You can get as creative as you want. You can absolutely use the pictures in the PowerPoint for ideas. You can mix and match them and come up with your own if you want to. The more you put, the better it's going to look. You could also look up winter llama pictures yourself and you might even find another image that you like. Once you have your ideas together, you can start to draw the details on your llama. For my winter llama, I decided to add a hat and a scarf, and I decided to double up the scarf because he has a pretty long neck, so he's gotta have a longer scarf to keep warm. And I added some fun lights that I can color nice bright colors. And I decided that maybe he's carrying some presents to his friends and a tree 
that was maybe chopped down and somebody needs some firewood to keep warm by the fire for the winter. And I added some lines so that it looked like the rope that's holding the tree down because we don't want it to fall off when the llama is walking. You can add whatever you want for your llama to carry on its back. It's up to you. Now that my llama is all designed, I'm going to work on the landscape behind it. So llamas are usually found in the desert and at night and in the winter, deserts get pretty cold and sometimes it does get a little snowy and frosty. So we can combine some winter ideas and some desert ideas together in our landscape background behind our llama. So I have to first make a line for my llama to stand on and it doesn't have to be straight. I think I'm gonna make it bumpy so it almost looks like dirt or sand. And remember, stop when you hit your llama and pick up where you leave off. That's a start. Now, usually in deserts, you find cactus growing. So there's different types of cactus. So maybe I make cactus that is tall, that looks like it has the arms that curve around, comes down to the ground. And it has the straight lines in it. Right? Maybe I make one of those cactuses that's more rounded. It looks like it kind of grows outward. And again, I'm going to stop if I hit my llama and pick up where I leave off. And maybe it has a little flower that grows at the end. Some cactuses have flowers that are pink or white and it's kind of prickly. Maybe there's some snow that started to fall so I can make it look like there's some snow on top of the ground. And maybe behind my llama, I'm gonna make another ground line. Remember we talked about how sometimes in our pictures we have to make two ground lines so that we can show things that are further away. So I can make a second one in the background and then I can make some maybe mountains that are further away from the front of my picture. So maybe I make some smaller desert mountains behind my llama. And they're just pointed like a triangle. And maybe there's some snow that started to fall on the top of the mountains. And there's a simple desert winter landscape that I can have behind my llama. Now you do not have to copy my landscape. You can add your own ideas. Maybe you don't have room for all of that in the background and you only want to show maybe the ground and a cactus or a cactus growing nice and tall. Maybe you want your llama to just be in a snowy area so you make it look like a snowy, blustery scene. That's fine too. And again, you can use all those pictures that were in the PowerPoint to help you with different ideas. Once you have it all drawn, if you wanna outline it with a black marker or crayon, of course you can. If not, you can go right to coloring. Now llamas are pretty simple. They're usually only white, brown, or gray. You can decide what type of llama you want. If it's white llama, brown llama, or gray llama. After that, the rest of the colors are up to you. Remember, if it's snow, you leave it white and everything else gets colored in. If it's gonna be like desert sand, different shades of brown are probably your best bet. And of course, different greens will work great for the cactus. Take your time when you color. You can use crayons, markers, color pencils, or whatever material you choose. I like to mix and match crayons and markers for mine. I added some markers first, unlike the mountains and the cactus, and then I go over them with crayons. And if you want to, you can add some swirls to your sky so it looks like a cold, windy, blustery day. Take your time with your llama pictures. Remember to add as many details as you want and you can use the images in the PowerPoint to help you out. Remember, it's always okay to look up pictures while we work for ideas and to mix and match them and change them a little bit for our own. Can't wait to see what your llamas look like when they are done. Good luck, artists.